What role does nature play in health? Without nature, we'd be dead. <laughs> I mean, although the modern mind, we don't often think of nature and health, or we think of it when there's a disaster, right? Oh, there's a flood. People were injured or sick or killed, you know? Oh, there's global warming. We could get diseases from bugs that are moving north because the climate's warming up. That's how we often think of nature and health, is when something bad happens. But if you look at it, if it weren't for these plants around us, we would not be able to breathe. If it weren't for these plants capturing the slightest fraction of energy from that the sun puts out, we, this planet would be desolate and barren like most of the other planets in the solar system and bodies in the solar system that we know, or all of them as far as we know. If it weren't for the ground and even the bacteria, I mean, we don't think about bacteria much, although it's coming up more and more in the news. Something that kind of trips me out recently, or tripped me out recently is, if you think about your cells, less than 10% of them are human. Most of them are bacterial. <laughs> like we are an ecosystem and we don't really think about that as much, although it's starting to come into consciousness, right? We are part of this broader ecosystem we're made of earth and we're made of water and we're made of sky and we're made of plants and we're made of animals like we're made of it so anything that happens to the earth happens to us any way that we treat the earth is a reflection of something going on inside of ourselves it's really it's how do we build place and how do we build place that is in connection with both people and and the environment because they are they are integrated it's very interesting how um, uh, writers much smarter than i describe our Earth today, um, we always have thought it was this endless opportunity to just populate, do whatever we wanted to, and then we realized that actually we're actually very much on a limited arc. And that whether we, again, admit it or not, we are interconnected by virtue of being in the same space. Yeah. And although it seems large, it's actually relatively small. So what we'd like to talk about, we'd like to speak about in terms of why companies and what companies get involved is that to become more educated about what they do and how it actually impacts those around them, but ultimately because of the connection, is going to impact them. Right. It may not be initially measurable. So I think when we begin to look at, and there's a lot of very, very good research writings coming out of Harvard and places like that, uh, uh, Umair Haik, uh, uh, Michael Porter, that speaks to the fact, again, whether we admit it or not, but we need to begin to understand it, is that we are part of the ecosystem, we are part of the social ecosystem, and that kind of what goes around comes around. And so you need to begin to understand that these are not just costs that we are doing in terms of what we do in our communities. These are investments in our communities and strong investments in communities make strong people. In the last decade, we've discovered a lot more about these lands. We undertook a study starting in 2006 and running for a couple of years after that to ask a basic question. How many plants are here? We've had scientists looking at the distribution of wild plants in this landscape since the mid-1950s in a serious way. And what, taking all of their information and combining it, led us to, in 2006-2007, was kind of a startling realization. The 10 square kilometers of property that Royal Botanical Gardens owns is the richest place in all of Canada for plant species diversity. You cannot find another area the same size with as many wild plant species growing on it as we have right here. But I think the eco park and the idea of creating a space um, in our city, in and around our city, that is uh, of, of a size, its scope, its depth in terms of, of um, uh, preserving and growing that ecosystem uh, for all the benefits we just talked about um, is demonstrable from an image perspective, um, but the image in the sense that it tells the outside world and people who we hope will locate and co-locate here to create better community, um, it tells them that we think in a certain way here. We value it. We value the, the, the ecosystem. We value its relationship to us. We value it in its relationship to how we innovate, how we think, how we want to live, how we want to preserve, how we want our kids to be seen, and how they see this as an, as an importance. So it's, it's a, such an incredible opportunity to set an entire image and tone for who we are as a city. And in a sense, almost in one foul swoop, 
by itself can rebrand this entire city as an eco city and not the kind of city that we have been known for in the past in terms of uh, our pollution or of our, of our lake that still is polluted, things of that nature. This is a giant step uh, forward in terms of the uh, rebrand of, of, of who we are and not just talking about it, actually demonstrating that we have really, really turned a corner.